How's it going guys? Your old pal Baba Ganoush here once again. Welcome to Q&A number two. So this past Saturday I started out with Q&A number one. Again, I'm going to be doing these on a regular occurrence. So if you certainly do have a question for me, leave it in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer it on my next video. So on my previous video, Q&A 1, some of you left me some questions down below that I really look forward to answering. Some really good questions touch, touching on a variety of different topics. Let's go ahead, dive right on into it and start with the first question. So the first question I got here, and I want to do this because this gentleman's name is so awesome. This is from Friar Rodney Burnap. Friar Rodney Burnap. And his question here today is, have you ever gone bikepacking? So Mr. Burnap, unfortunately, I have never gone bikepacking. Uh, certainly it is something that I do want to do one day and, and something that I would really love to experience. I heard it's really incredible. However, this past year, I've really just been preparing for my upcoming Appalachian Trail through hike. I really didn't find it necessary to start investing my income in other areas that weren't really pertaining towards the benefit of my through hike. So to answer your question, unfortunately not, but I am looking forward to it in the future. Next question I got here is from Across the Pond, from Graham Blaney, excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, Graham Blaney, uh, really cool question. His question is, if I'm a little bit apprehensive on going for an adventure, that will be about five months or so long. So Graham, thank you so much for that question. Of course, preparing for a trip that is that extensive for such a long distance, for such a prolonged period of time, certainly you're gonna get a little bit nervous and a little bit apprehensive about, am I really doing this? You know, you get cold feet, so to say. However, you know, I constantly remind myself of why I love the outdoors, why I love backpacking. Um, and the real reasons that why I'm doing this, if you haven't looked at those already, I do have a why I'm through hiking sitting right up here for you. Definitely take a look at it. You know, it's what I like to say, um, you know, this is not just who I am, it's what I was meant to do. So certainly, I'm a little bit nervous about spending five or six months hiking a trail out in the middle of the woods. Of course, who wouldn't be? But I think my excitement and the enjoyment I'm going to have and the experiences that, that I'm going to take part in uh, are really overriding any kind of anxiety that I have for my upcoming through hike. So really good question. Again, you know, anybody's going to be nervous. Of course, I've had my moments. Bob, are you, Bob, are you really doing this? And, and of course, you know, you just got to remind yourself that like, hey, you know, it's one day at a time. It's one step at a time. If you just stay on schedule and basically just put a bunch of small section hikes together, you're eventually going to get all the way up to Katahdin and, and finish the end of your trip. So this next question is actually from a gentleman named Keith Stewart, and he actually has a question about my, uh, pertaining to some of my equipment that I actually carry. And his question is, do you have to buy a half a size bigger in your shoes uh, because your feet swell while hiking? And Keith, great question. I actually did cover that in another video, uh, basically hiking footwear. You can press on that right above. But to just give you a quick spiel, um, yes, I always go a half a size up with my shoes. I do have extended sizes for along my through hike as my feet start to grow and flatten out and stretch out. I do have one or two other shoes in additional sizes to accommodate that additional growth. But definitely check out that video up above. I explain a little bit more in detail the kind of shoes that I carry, why I carry them, the kind of socks that I carry, so on and so forth. Um, and I can really get more into detail just right there. Next question, this is really cool. Coming all the way overseas from Belgium. Uh, but from Trail 75, and he asked if I ever considered buying a drone for my hikes. Trail 75, absolutely, I have looked into possibly purchasing a drone on my hikes. I think it would be really cool, especially doing some of the ridge lines and things, to where that drone can lift up, to really get the whole scope of, of really how far out I really am, while still seeing this little tiny person just go along the trail. Um, I just thought it would be really, really good and just kind of make my videos a little bit more professional, a little bit more eye grabbing as well. Now, certainly I'm getting ready for my through hike. So once again, it's not an expense that I was looking to add on top of what I'm already preparing for. So as much as I want to get a drone and I really, really do, it's something that is just going to have to wait until after my through hike. All right. So next question we got here is from John McVeigh. 
And his question is, what are your thoughts on backpacking chairs? My thoughts are, they are pretty awesome. Unfortunately, they're just not for me. Now, I've seen plenty of people bring lightweight backpacking chairs, those lightweight tripod stools. I actually used to have one of those myself. Um, it really is your own personal preference. I know some people who say they will never leave home without it. Just to be able to have an actual seat, an actual chair at camp, great way to get yourself up off the ground, especially if there's snow or it's been raining all day, uh, definitely could be a huge benefit. I see a lot of bike packers always carrying camp chairs with them as well. Obviously, they can just strap it to their bike. But I do see plenty of other people carrying some kind of chair with them out on the trail. Now, me personally, I think it's just additional weight for a convenience that really isn't necessary. But again, that's just me. Some people absolutely swear by them. I myself just carry uh, something you see a lot of people, the Thermo Z seat. This is just a simple, inexpensive, lightweight foam pad. Uh, really isn't much to it. It at least is something to insulate your uh, backside from the cold ground, uh, create a dry surface uh, instead of sitting on like a wet rock or like a wet log or something like that as well. Um, just something nice and multi-purpose. I can fan the fire with it as well. You know, it's nice where I can put this down and kneel on it in front of my tent so I'm not putting my, uh, putting my knees right into the dirt and the mud and things like that. Uh, just something that creates a little bit more versatility for me personally, um, and as well, of course, is something that's super nice and lightweight, coming in at only two ounces. So camp chairs, they are awesome, super comfy, super convenient, just not for me personally. So, and then the last question that we have here today uh, is from PNW Adventures and Gear Reviews. His question is in regards to my through hike, which is why I wanted to save this for last. So if, excuse me, it's a bit of a long one, uh, I'm just going to read it right off my laptop here. So he asks, uh, are you going to be doing resupplies every five days to keep the weight down or every seven days and are you shipping all your food or do you plan on buying them in town as well? Second part to that question, again, like I said, this is a good one. Uh, what is the amount of time you are trying to complete your hike in? Those are great, great questions, which is why I wanted to save this particular question for last. So let me actually start with the second part of that question so I can spend a little bit more time talking about the first part. So it's really hard to say how long I'm going to be out there for. It's always impossible to predict the weather or injuries or other such things from happening. And, you know, understanding it's a marathon, not a sprint. In the very early stages, I'm not going to crank out the miles uh, in the early onsets of my hike like you typically see me doing on my section hikes. My section hikes are only a few days. I can push my body a little bit more um, and really stretch those miles out. This is a trip that's expected to last months. So the best thing that I can possibly do, especially early on, is keep things slow, keep things nice and easy, build up my endurance, build up my strength, my trail legs. As I start to really, really get things going, as well as as the seasons start to progress and the days get longer, I'm able to stretch the miles out a little bit more. If I can average somewhere around that 14 to 16 miles a day uh, for the whole length of the trip, um, you know, I'm looking probably about five to five and a half months for the length of my trip. And first part to that question is if I'm going to resupply every five days to keep my weight down or resupply every seven days to stretch out the miles, um, or if I'm going to be having uh, food mailed down to me if I'm just going to resupply in town. So for the most part, uh, Fernando and I are just going to look to resupply in town. Uh, we are going to have family and friends send some care packages down uh, along the way. We don't expect a whole bunch. Um, and of course, as the seasons change over, we will send back our cold weather gear in exchange for our warm weather gear. However, for the most part, we're just going to resupply in towns um, and pick up food as we go, uh, so on and so forth from there. Now, five days to seven days, again, that's really tough to dictate depending on the weather, how many zero days we take, uh, if we're doing less miles or more miles, that kind of thing. We figure anywhere between three to five days is when we're going to resupply for the most part, keep that weight down as well as we can kind of control what's going on in our daily schedule a little bit more. Otherwise, if I'm planning for an entire week, I'm stuck with all that food for the whole week kind of thing. So especially if there's a really nice campsite that I want to stay at, um, or, or I take more zero days or more less or more short mile days than I was expecting, I'm still going to have to carry and eat all that food. 
So planning on three to five days resupply, I have a little bit more control over that with what I really want to do. So I hope that helped you guys out with some of those questions. I really appreciate you taking the time to give me those questions as well. Uh, I really appreciate the support, really appreciate the feedback, and I hope to continue these more in the future. So certainly if you do have a question for me, leave it down below in the comments, uh, leave it on my Twitter page, leave it on my Instagram or my Facebook page. I will certainly see them and I will do whatever I can to answer them on video for you guys. So thank you guys so much for following along on another great video. Again, leave those questions down below for me and I really look forward to answering them on the next video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Hit that share button as well. I would really appreciate it. Uh, leave me a comment. Leave me a question. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Pleasure as always. Baba Ganoush out.